Recording in progress. Yeah. I guess, I guess some, some two devices. Two devices. No problem. Okay. okay. Can I start? Yeah. 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 Sri Dhanmantri uh, uh, From the uh, Indian, Indian Institute of Ayurveda, Ayurveda. Ayurveda. Uh, you, uh, with the part three session of Bhakti Pariksha. And it's utility in clinical practice. So today I welcome Dr. Gopi Krishna to continue with your question. We will give an uh, introduction to our delegate that uh, we are starting our uh, certificate course on preconception study. So we would be starting that session from 13th of September. It would be a six day course. Uh, so, Dr. Shruti Bennor and Dr. Gopi Krishna sir would be the faculty. So, by tomorrow, it will be available for you to uh, register in our website. So, we uh, request you to please join the session and get the benefit. So, that session is mainly based on what the couple has to do for having a healthy progeny. Because after birth, we cannot do the any of the genetic changes we cannot give a very immunity, beautiful immunity to the baby. So that has to be done beforehand. So when we are uh, uh, sowing a seed, we check that it is a healthy seed and then it is sowed so that we get a very good tree or the plant or the crop would be beautiful. So the same thing has to be there when we are going for a progeny. So we would be discussing in detail about the uh, study analysis to be done, counseling, how the uh, couple has to be prepared physic mentally and physically because sometimes it happens like they are not prepared mentally but they get uh, conceived and they don't uh, get to handle that they go into panic and all those so how they have to be prepared beforehand for having their conception so in this theme we are planning to start our uh, clinic uh, uh, next course on uh, preconception health uh, for a healthy progeny uh, so the Registration would be open from tomorrow and the session starts from 13th of September. Uh, so this was an announcement from the, our team to our delegates. So I request Dr. Gopi Krishna sir to continue with the session. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pallavi. Uh, indeed, that would be very uh, interesting and uh, the session is very much uh, necessary for the present day. Yes. Every every person, whoever um, uh, are facing the, the lifestyle changes, the lifestyle invariable changes. I want to be more healthier. I want to maintain all the Swastha Vrutta and Sadhvrutta Palana. I want to follow the Dinacharya and Rutucharya. But my profession or my uh, uh, timetable, how are the schedules being managed the whole day, my job, my profession, many times it's not permitting me to uh, handle these situations. Then I need to trespass the norms and I need to depend on many of the factors which is really uh, invariably out of my scope. I want to eat a healthy food which is cooked in home, very freshly prepared every day. But I go on traveling for uh, various institutional works for my profession or any of the aspects where I need to depend on some foods and other aspects outside. I might not be able to go up with my uh, physical workouts every day because I travel frequently. So on that grounds, what happens, there are some changes in our biological clocks. And if at all it is possible to arrest these biological clocks or if at all it is possible to filter these biological clocks, uh, we are planning to launch up or we are scheduled to launch, uh, launch the preconception program wherein how best we can support it through Ayurveda. So anyway, for the registration and other details, do visit our website www.iiar.co.in by which you'll come to know many details about the new courses and about many of the sessions of these kinds. And coming to the present day topic as such, today is the day three, where we are discussing about the basmas. We were, we have discussed about the basic concepts of how 
the basmas are being uh, done or how the basmas are significant what are the therapeutic forms of basmas how is it we need to identify them at a clinical level how is it we can uh, try to administer it to the patient and also the methods of preparations and the utility and the significance of the various types of basmas we have come up with the types of the basmas which are in general and what is the significance of it with the clinical trials like parada marita basmas what are the importance of it accordingly so on the request of the delegates uh, we are coming up in little bit of more details about what is the basma pariksha because it becomes a foundation step for every student or the enthusiast who is really interested to know how the basma pariksha to be carried out basically this also could be one of the guidelines for all the practitioners at a clinical level to assess whether the basma which they have procured from the market or from a particular pharmaceutical company or any of their known merchants or friends whether the basma is a genuine one or it is a fake one a gross outline but anyway as we have already discussed npst is one of the very basic thing and potassium molybdate solution test is one more thing which we have discussed in the previous session so these are very few of the classical uh, basma parikshas which are being explained in the textbook so there are many things which can be very specific in every basma and one more thing let me say this are the compiled works of all the basma parikshas uh they are not like all this pariksha should be seen in every basma you use in your clinic say for example chandrika yukta means you have a glittering particles in the basma it's a mandate test for abraka it's a mandate test for abraka when you take a very small amount of basma and you roll it in between your fingers the amount of basma enters into the natural folds of your fingers and it settles there this is called as rekha purna or what you can see here in the pulp of the finger the basma is been totally filled up and in case if the particle size of the basma is big enough then the basma will never enter into the smaller uh, areas of the natural folds of the fingers there suggest you that the basmas are really made up of some nanoparticles they are to the size of a nanoparticle they are micro particles when you read the textbook of dactylography that is a study about the fingerprinting and other aspects there are many uh, natural folds uh, which is uh, one of the identification feature for every human and they are unique one thing very common among the people is there are parallel lines there are converging and diverging lines where you can see here as a natural folds like this so in between these two lines the difference or the distance between two lines is hardly around 2 to 8 microns the deeper part of it so on that grounds what happens if the basma can really enter into this particular area means the size of the basma is less than 8 microns which is a very 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 significant test for us to say like yes this basma is feasible to be given through the patient for the particle size is as per the norms of the classics so this is how it is it is been enumerated and this is called as rekha purna this test is called as rekha purna where the basma enters into the natural folds of the fingers or the skin and that particular test is called as rekha purna when you take the same uh, finger where you have uh, really immersed or when you roll the basma in between your fingers and you try to see it under the bright sunlight you try to see if at all you can find some bright glittering particles in your uh, pulp of the finger where you have rolled the basma and in case if you are able to see some of the glittering particles there some shiny particles there okay. that is any anything like that then uh, in that grounds you are not supposed to uh, really use it in case if your uh, basma is not uh, uh, fulfilling the criteria uh, like it's not been totally 
advised in case if it's coming out of the natural folds and it's not really entering into the natural folds of your fingers you're not supposed to give it to the patient considering like it's a macro particle it's not a micro particle and in case if it's a micro particle and it's not having a glittering particles in it then definitely you can give these bus masks to the patients but this is not a band-aid test let me uh, uh, stress this once again this is not a mandate test just because of the reason in case uh, if it's abrakabasma where you're expected to have nischandratva is one of the most important criteria for addressing the abrakabasma samyak pariksha but this is not the test for tamrabasma in case if it is parada marita tamrabasma when you read the textbook of ayurveda prakasha the acharya has explained it like uh, where uh, when you perform the parada marita tamrabasma he speaks about the term called che set sa chandrika yuktam the tamrabasma should be having the glittering particles in it in case if it is parada marita in case if you have nischandratva in tamrabasma then it is not fitted to be given uh, to assess the or to fulfill the criteria of parada marita tamrabasma for this you can refer the chapter on tamra in ayurveda prakasha but nischandratva is an essential quality uh, of abrakabasma similarly varitara varitara is when you uh, place a small amount of basma on the water you sprinkle it it floats on water it never sinks then it is said to be a ideal basma or it is fulfilling the test for varitara as you can see here in the picture like the basma is floating on the water it's a small uh, a beaker where we have placed some water and into that we have poured this basma and it is floating and this particular test is called as varitara so this particular test is very important for all the basmas most of the times but this test is not supposed to be performed for the sudha vargya dravyas because sudha vargya dravyas are water soluble when somebody says like shanka shukti varatika basmas or floating on water please don't believe them because all these are calcium carbonate derivatives which are soluble in water and they disintegrate into water so you try to read the textbooks there are for every basma there is basma siddhi lakshanas which is given he never gives a side heading called as basma siddhi lakshana but unfortunately including the staff i am very sorry to say this many times including the staff uh people entitle all these parikshas should be seen in every basma whichever they read so this particular thing is really a myth you are not supposed to fulfill all the basma parikshas in all the basmas of your syllabus you are not supposed to have it as i said as an examples like parada marita tamra basma should have the glittering particles abraka basma should be uh without chandrika yukta the rest of the basmas like might be the loha basma or abraka basma should have varitara whereas sudha vargya dravyas will not have varitara aswadu is a uh, test for being performed like where you put a small amount of basma into your mouth and it should not have any specific taste means it is aswadu it should not have any taste but the sudha vargya dravyas are having the kshariya taste in it so any of this sudha vargya dravyas are having a kshariya taste and this is not an abnormality this is not an abnormality and dadi pariksha or amla pariksha where you take small amount of copper derivatives like you have the swarnamakshika you have tutta you have tamra basma any of these things which are having copper as a content in that then you do you do uh, you perform the dadi pariksha means when you take uh, the small amount of basma and it has been sprinkled over the curds or any of the amla dravyas like it could be even a simple lemon juice and you sprinkle over it and leave it for some 4 to 6 hours and even after that there is no discoloration being observed very next to that of the basmas which you have sprinkled especially the greenish blue colored discoloration which is commonly seen in case if you have apakwa basma this is called as amla pariksha or dadi pariksha which is very specific for the copper derivatives but this is not a common test or this is not a regularly done test for non copper derivatives so you should be very very particular among most of the basmas whenever it is being explained then what happens this particular uh, basma pariksha is really reliable 
we'll come across each and everything once again but let me show you how the basma pariksha is being done many of you people uh, who are here would have been already uh, accomplished the course on the maharasa varga dravyas in indian institute of ayurveda and rashastra so i have just got some clippings from there how the basma pariksha was been done there you can see here this is swarnamakshika and swarnamakshika basma varitara pariksha is been done like this uh, we have taken a small cup like thing and where we have poured water up to the brim and this is uh, rajatamakshika and this is swarnamakshika we take a small amount of basma and it is placed just above the brim of this water and it floats observe it observe the way how the basma floats so to further confirm the same varitara pariksha the next test which we do is called as uttama or unam so what we do here in uttama pariksha is the basma is floating now it's called as varitara for the further confirmation of it we place a grain of rice over it as a further confirmation you can see here a grain of rice is floating on it on the basma like this this is the dadi pariksha where amla dravyas like the lemon juice is taken here and we are uh, placing here with that of the tutta basma we are sprinkling over the lemon juice and allow it to stand for few hours we have tried this even for 24 hours uh, place the basma over there and leave it for 24 hours and try to see how it reacts with the lemon juice see now it's floating there on the lemon juice allow it to stand as it is this is done for swarnamakshika this is done for for tutta this is done for tamra basma so here we have taken the lemon juice like this and uh, to that lemon juice we have poured it and we have kept it even after 24 hours there is no discoloration you can see here after 24 hours there is no discoloration and uh, this test is called as the one which has been passed for the pariksha and so that this basma can be used and which we name it as accomplished which is accomplished so similarly this is for sasyaka basma you can see the rekha purna and this is the varitara how it is floating all these things were been discussed in detail when we were on the course on the maharasa varga dravyas this is amla pariksha for the tutta or the sasyaka basma you can see even after 24 hours there is no discoloration means the test is passed for it and you can use it for the clinical trials so this is a vimala basma you can see the rekha purna nischandratva and the varitara pariksha so this is for the vaikranta the fluorite basma the varitara pariksha this is called as varitara this is again you can see the rekha purna and in the sunlight there is no glittering particles in it means nischandratva this is uttama where you uh, say as a rice grain is been placed over it 
this is called as unam or uttama this is for the further confirmation of the varita ratva where the rice grain floats on the basma so these are the various tests which has been carried out for the basma siddhi lakshanas or the basma pariksha so here it becomes the rekha purna where you have seen it already now the various tests which are to be carried out and also the varitara pariksha it's like where you make the basma to float like this and here comes a practical problem because whenever you have certain people say like 100% it has to float and i will say it need not be 100% which it needs to float if it is more than 50 to 70% the basma is said to be ideal and it can be used for the clinical trials the macro particles never get absorbed across the gut it is been passed away in the fecal matter as it is so need not worry about it at least 70% which has been floating is considered as a micro particles which can be absorbed across the gut through the mucous membrane and it can be used for the clinical trials with a very good therapeutic use to speak about the chemistry part of it we have learned it possibly in our eighth standard about the bionsis law why ship floats on water it's not because the ship is light in weight it's quite heavy enough but it's a surfactant of the water which is rippling or which is giving a force and the the ship is able to make it opposite in equal and opposite direction and it is able to sustain it because of the fineness of the particles which is made at the bottom of the ship the same way where you can see the basmas because they had been totally been interlocked between them because of the fineness of the particle never consider like varitara is for lightness varitara is a test for fineness of the particle it's not for the lightness of the particle always it has to uh, say whenever people ask me no 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 sir it, it is done for the lightness of the particle not for the fineness of the particle it's a wrong statement i'll i'll prove this with an example take a lotus leaf try to weigh its weight might be it's approximately around 10 grams allow it to float it on water just throw it on water it floats right you take the same lotus leaf and you crush it in the form of a kalka which is of equally 10 grams again but you place it on water it never floats it sinks why the same leaf in the form of a leaf it has floated the same lotus leaf in the form of a kalka has sinked so both of them are entirely the same components but one was able to float but the other one was unable to float because the surfactant action which is acting at the bottom or the base of the uh, particle whichever you are throwing on water or on the liquid is not able to sustain it and it absorbs or it gets disintegrated this is a version of the bionsis law so try to understand this is a fineness of the particle not for the it's not a test for the lightness of the particle so this is called as varithara the next one is uh, nischandratva we have discussed about it the glittering particles are most of the times the metallic components where you need to make it into more and more finer and make it uh, see that it becomes nischandratva uttama or unam is the rice grain which floats on water next is about the apunarbhava this is one of the problem which many times you find uh, with some of the basmas because uh, you have disintegrated the metallic components into a minor components but it's not totally converted into a non metallic component when you are taking the basma it should be a non metallic component the basma should not have any dhatutva guna or any of the metallic features should not be seen in the end product it should not have any of the features or any of the lakshanas of a dhatu or a metal but it happens like sometimes it is in a semi processed condition wherein it passes the test for varithara rekha purna and uttama but when you pass that particular test for the apunarbhava it fails apunarbhava is a test where we take the basma along with that we add the dravaka gana like the guda gunja tankana madhu and gritha which makes the metals to melt much quicker we mix up the basma along with it and incinerate it give the putta by giving putta what happens in case if you have any of the metallic components the metallic components it gets sinked or it gets settled in the bottom in the form of a metallic portion as it is and when you remove the sharavasam putta 
after the punar bhava puta you find the metallic components in it in case if you have the metallic co components then you say a punar bhava test is failed you should not have it this is a sort of a chemical testing for the basmas whereas varithara reka purna uttama all these things are the physical test apunar bhava nirutha or the chemical test nirutha is another test wherein we take a small silver coin of known weight which is having a less melting point usually and it is been placed with the basma sometimes it happens like much of the metallic components say for example you are using some nagabasma or vangabasma or anything like that uh, 80% to 90% of the metallic components in naga and vanga is been converted in the form of a basma but due to some reasons our assessment criteria was not that right so you have around 10 or 20% of the naga in the form of a metallic components or the lead in a metallic components then that particular lead which is still in a metallic component gets amalgamated with the amount of silver which you have placed in the nirutha pariksha while you process it with heat or temperature so the silver coin which was been placed along with the basma in a puta was of 10 grams prior to processing to the heat treatment after the heat treatment or after the puta samskara the weight of the coin has converted from 10 to 11 or 12 means your basma is still unfit to be given because it has failed the test for nirutha so this particular test need to be very cautious and it's a chemical testing to see that if at all there are any of the metallic components it gets easily amalgamated with the silver in the form of a liquid state or a molten state so that is the reason why the nirutha pariksha is being carried out avami we, it's very again specific for the tamra or the derivatives of the tamra because it's having most of the dhatus or having a metallic taste which causes a sort of a chardi or a nauseating smell but uh, it is a very very specific test for tamra because tamra is having a very nauseating taste and that particular thing will cause uh, severe nausea and vomiting so any of the basmas should have avami guna means it should not have any of the vomiting sensation or it should not have any nausea like sensation by taking it amla pariksha usually what happens the copper content will have a sort of a color uh, a chemical reaction between um, the citrus part of it or citric acid or amla dravyas and it gives a sort of a bluish green colored precipitate so in case if you have any of the metallic components of copper and its derivatives in the basma which is not it converted into the basma form which is still having a metallic component in it then it reacts with the amla dravyas and it totally converts into a sort of a color uh, discoloration which is seen in the dhadi or the amla pariksha so this is called as amla pariksha which is very specific again for the copper derivatives similarly the nirdhuma pariksha again this is also very significant test but this is very specific for the haratala preparations especially the haratala basma so it is called as nirdhuma uh, unfortunately people do carry for many of the basmas nirdhuma they say my basma is having nirdhuma why will your basma will have dhumatva you have any of the organic components which has been placed there you have incinerated it with 1000 degrees in a gajaputa and why is it you have some organic components again to go with the dhumatva nirdhuma is specific for the haratala preparations where the acharya is asked us to do the nirdhuma pariksha once it is a haratala basma then this particular basma is done with the dhuma pariksha when you take a small amount of basma and it has been uh, uh, sprinkled over the fire it should not emit any of the smoke that is because of the burning of the arsenic even the arsenic could have been converted to some other derivatives so it should not have that a sort of a burning type of thing so that's the reason why nirdhuma is been carried out and it doesn't have any of uh, the metallic components will not have any of the uh, specific taste like the metallic taste or you have a sort of a nauseating taste and all that is the reason why you have a test called as niswadu niswadu is very specific it should not have any taste no specific taste that is for any of the basmas nishchandratva we have discussed about it it should be lagu it should be lagu in case if your basma is guru then it's really unfit uh, for the clinical administration so you have to select the drugs accordingly this is very specific to go with 
any of the tests related with that of the basma parikshas so based on this here all these things we have already seen now the parikshas which is been done so for any of the more details of this you can any time register for the course on the maharasas in uh, indian institute of ayurveda and rasa shastra and you can enroll and you can see all this in the form of a classes so there are lots of classes related to the maharasa varga dravyas the next most important thing which we need to know a bit about is about the bioinformatics so it's an upcoming discipline of life science which is an integration of the computer science and the mathematical and statistical methods to manage and analyze the biological data the fundamental issues that directly impact an understanding of life at structural functional and the molecular level and regulation of the gene expression can be studied under the bioinformatics tool so uh, it's nothing but a good sound regular biology appropriately dressed so it can fit into a computer so to explain this in a very simple language uh, it's something like uh, when you send a basma for any of the analysis uh, all the analytical reports like you have the xrd xrf nmr spectra you have raman spectra everything all this data is been fed to a software there are many softwares in the bioinformatics so uh, it is been fed to the computer computer generates itself a sort of a structural formula for the basma and this particular structural formula tries to feed in with all the amino acids and proteins which is present in the body there are millions of it in the body so it tries to feed with it say for example i want to give mrutyunjaya rasa in jwara patient so a patient who is supposed to land up into jwara some of his gene expressions means there is some alterations which is done in his genes in the attack of fever so by giving mrutyunjaya rasa can this mrutyunjaya rasa go on repair that gene at a uh, genetic level or a level of a dna or a protein expression is been studied in a computer prior to you give it to a human patient this is something like i am not supposed to use it exactly like but still it is something like coming parallel to that of the animal experimentations where you go for something like experiments in vivo so similarly again this is a experiment which can be carried out uh, through the computers here you are not sacrificing any animals you are not going for any of the laboratories it's very simply done across a computer so this can be done before you administer it for the patient and it will give you the values values at what energy levels will this link with any of the biological molecules of a per person and according to that it can be given but anyway i'm not going into the details of it metallonomics is a new interdisciplinary science that arises from the growing needs of the knowledge of the metals in the biochemistry of the organism people speak about no metals are not digested in the human body because they are not essential components might be some essential components like copper and iron are there but it's not like you ayurvedic people use so many things like uh, you use lead you use tin you use so many things which are really not essential components for the nutritional value of it for the body but still i would like to say they are having lots of therapeutic efficacies and they are having their own uh, importance in the biology of an individual so this is very much evident from the science of rasa shastra the therapeutics of it is been very well evident by your clinical practices but anyway you have uh, some specific transporters for this metals of course for the iron it is sft nramp2 this is a specific transporter in the body similarly for the jasada it is znt nramp2 again so this is tentatively some of the markers or the transporters in the body once this basma or this components or this metallic components enters then this particular uh, transporters or the receptors will take them up and it is been transmitted into the human body but anyway the pharmaceutical companies and the bioinformatics so people might ask what is the use of it so this is uh, primarily for the r and d uh, in case if it is uh, for the standardization of the drugs and also it has been bioinformatics is specifically used for the preventive diagnostic and treatment of the disease and it develop more therapeutics of the drugs also it is significant for the relationship between the protein gene sequence and the protein function and a field uh, popular as proteomics it is used as a drug marker it can be used as effective therapeutic molecules or more safe less toxic and have the better bioavailability and for the drug discovery so for all these reasons we need the bioinformatics in the present scenario 
we'll try to come up with a couple of basmas with their therapeutic valuations as per the text or our clinical experiences. The first one is about the Swarna Basma. It is having lots and lots of praises from the textbook and we are using it extensively in your clinical practice. Many times when you have the most hazardous disease or when you have any of the complaint where it is highly critical, the first choice of the drug which you go with is the Swarna Basma or any of the derivative of the Swarna. Why is that we do that? But let us try to see what the textbooks speak about the Falashruti of the Swarna Basma. Rasatarangini 15 chapter speaks about Mrutam, Suvarnam, Madurancha Vrushyam, Rudhyancha Netram, Paramancha Medhyam, Rasayanam, Umsavanopa Yogi, Vishapaha, Kantikarancha, Shastam. So he speaks about it is Madura Rasa, but people speak like Rasaushadis or Rasha Shastra people don't follow, they don't have Rasa Guna Virya Vipaka. But see, so many places you have everything. It is Madurancha, it is Madura Rasa. Suvarna is Madura, it is Vrushya, it can be used in uh, male and female infertility, it can be used in loss in libido and other aspects. So it is having the Vrushya property. It is uh, Rudhya, Rudhya, it is used as Rudhya Dravya, it can be used as very cardioprotective agent. I have so many patients where the ejection factor is very less. When you see for the 2D echo in the um, uh, cardiac evaluation, where the ejection factor is significantly low, for most of my patients, I'm giving them with four grams to six grams of Hemagarbha Potali to the patient. This is four to six grams is per month. If it's an adult and well-built, we are going even eight to 10 grams per month. So this is the dosage of Hemagarbha, which we are giving in a cardiac complaints. You have a patient with uh, a chronic uh, hypertension where you might have left atrium or left ventricular hypertrophy. In those patients also, in case if it's very chronic, then we are giving them with that of the Swarna preparations because Rudhyam. Next is the Natrium. Any of the uh, disorders of the ENT, specifically ophthalmology, like where we are going with that of the Swarna Basma, Paramancha Medhyam. So because of this Medhya property, we are giving the Swarna Basma or the Swarna derivatives in the uh, conditions where you have the, like the conditions like autism or where you have uh, reduced IQ, psychological complaints or any of the issues where you need to increase the memory. Medhya alone doesn't mean like only to increase your IQ. It has a wide scope where might be sometimes when we deal with that of the psychosomatic disorders, we'll definitely come across what does the medium term means about. Anyway, it is Rasayanam. It can uh, nourish all the dhatus of the body uh, from Rasa to Shukra and also it is Ojo Vardhaka. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, the previous class, somebody asked me, is there any Rasa Ushadi which can be used for Pumsavana? So here is the reference for them. Pumsavana Payogi. Swarna Basma is Um Savanopayogi. This is a reference from Rasatarangini. Vishapaham. So this is an excellent detoxifier. When you have any of the patient who has been intoxicated with unwanted drugs, people who are being intoxicated with some toxins or people who are taken lots and lots of irrational use of drugs, medicines. It happens many times without the advice of any of the proper authentic doctors or self-medication sometimes the, or uh, even with the foods nowadays, as I said in the initial format, like people are so much dependent on the fast foods and other aspects. So where all of these factors uh, make you to land up into something called as Visha. So this particular Swarna Basma is having Visha Paha. It reduces the Visha. It removes the Visha from the body. And also Kanti Karancha. So even somebody asked me, I think in the previous class, I guess, uh, is there any basma which can be used for the cosmetic value? Can it be used for skin conditions or the cosmetic conditions? Here it is, I have uh, informed you about the Swarna Basma. So here it is the Swarna Basma, which is increasing the Kanti. It increases the glow, the facial glow or any of the glow. Uh, it, it gives a glow on the whole body. So I strongly recommend people to take at least a very small concentrations of Swarna. Might be it's around two grams per month as a Rasayan Artha. I advise them to take with that of the Hemagarbha Potali. Just rub it, the tablet of Hemagarbha, 
for around three to six circles per day and take it only one dose in the morning. That is really essential. Kanti Karanjain doesn't mean like uh, Kanti, I am very much uh, important on the grounds of cosmetic value. Kanti is a sort of your reflection of your health. In case if you are healthy only, then you have a sort of a glow from your body or from your face. In case if you're not healthy, then you don't have that glow. Don't say like Kanti is being achieved by applying some cosmetics on the face. No, that's not Kanti. Kanti is something like inner glow. When you when somebody sees you, you find uh, they say, they find a sort of a charming face, even though you're not laughing or you're not smiling at them, but they find your face is very much appeasing. This is Kanti. It's a reflection of your health. It's a reflection of your dhatus. So this particular thing is being achieved if you take Swarnabhasma. And this is the uh, importance of Swarnabhasma. Again, you have the reference from the same textbook of Prasadarangini as Mrutam Suvarnam Shishiram Vayasthapana Muthamam. It is Vayasthapakara. It um, Shiryate Anena Tishiriram. Every moment the body is deteriorating. So it is called a Sharira. This process is being hampered or it is made slow or it gives a jerks to stop the fast deterioration of the body uh, where it is called as Vayasthapana. It doesn't make your body to turn aged. So this is very important step for the present conditions because the life expectancy of the people is coming shorter and shorter nowadays. People claim like the percentage of survival is really high. Once upon a time, people used to survive for 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, 100 plus. But nowadays, 50 plus or 60 plus, no assurance. People might die any time. But still the science or the statistics speaks the quality of life is significantly improved. The percentage of the life is life expectancy is significantly high nowadays. But anyway, it's an average among the huge population which is there. But for that, Vayasthapana is one such component of the Swarnabhasma, which can be given to the people to arrest the aging process. You don't want to land up into the geriatric complications or geriatric usage, then you need to take the drugs like that of the Swarnabhasma, which could be much benefited to slow down the process of Shiryate Anenati Sharidam. Smruti Pradam, so it gives a sort of a memory, Smruti Pradam, and also Smruti Pradam, it's a sort of an attribute for increasing your Medhya Shakti, and also it is also significantly used in the conditions like autoimmune disorders. Why I speak about this particular condition as autoimmune disorders? Just because of the reason in the autoimmune disorder, the cells of your body has forgotten that what are the components of your body and it starts to attack it itself. This is called as autoimmune condition. Your body rejects your organs. Your body rejects your own body. This is because of lack of the Medhya Shakti, lack of the Smriti of your body. So try to increase its Buddhi. So how do you increase its buddhi of the body or how to increase the buddhi of your cells by taking the smruti pradha? You need to give them with that of the swarnabhasma. That is the reason why in autoimmune conditions, we plan to give to the patient with that of the swarnabhasma. Paranchayiva, tridosha, jwaranashanam. So this is very specifically used in tridosha jwaras. Any of the sannipati jvayadis. Swarnabhasma is uh, the right choice which can be given in most of the clinical utilities. Saundharyam mukalavanyam vivardhayet. Like for the delegates who have asked for the cosmetic issue on the rasaushadis, here you have. It speaks you become saundharya. You become very beautiful by taking Swarnabhasma. It's not like tapping on the face. It's internal administration. Your inner beauty is being enhanced by taking the Swarnabhasma. Mukalavanyam, your face turns to be very uh, tender looking and very beautiful. Mukha lavanyam, very beautiful looking. Vivardhayet, it increases. Pitta haritvam angayeshu janayecha visheshataha. So it is also useful for Tridoshaja, no doubt. And also it is specifically used in uh, many of the internal organs and its genesis. So this is the reason why uh, we are using this Swarnabhasma in preconception period. Uh, we try to give the Swarnabhasma to the male partner 
Rajatavasma to the female partner, at least for a period of three months. Why? Here you have the evidence in the textbook and also we'll be going in detail about it from the class on the preconception schedules, which has been going to start from 13th of this month. And how is that we need to give these basmas and how is that they might help the female or the male in the preconception period. Murutam suvarnam su snigdham vak vishuddhi karam param. So it is having snigdha guna and also it is having the vak vishuddhi. Some people don't have this uh, uh, speaking uh, capacity. Some people have a sort of a disturbed throat uh, because of some organic issues or because of the psychological complaints or because of uh, uh, nerve innervations or epiglottis complaints, anything like that. So in any of these conditions, again, Swarnabhasma is a choice of drug. Chinta Shokha Bayakrodha Sambhuta Amaya Nashanam. So it is used in all the psychosomatic disorders. It is used in Chinta, it is used in Shokha, Bhaya, Krodha. In all these psychosomatic conditions or psychological issues, you are supposed to prescribe them with that of the Swarnabhasma. Shiro Deshe Prabhruddhantu Rakta Sancharana Kriyam. So it is used for the normal circulation throughout the body. You have a hampering of the circulation like the Sangha pathology. You have a cardiac blocks. You have a deep vein thrombosis. You have embolisms. You have Sangha pathologies in any of the shrotas specifically related to that of the cardia or specifically related to that of the Raktava shrotas. So in all these conditions, you're supposed to um, uh, administer them with that of the Swarnabhasma. Rakta Sancharana Kriyam, it helps in circulating system. It helps in circulation. It doesn't allow the blocks to further block it. It removes the channels and it makes it Sancharana, it makes it movement. So this is an advantage of taking the Swarnabhasma. Similarly, it is being explained from the textbooks. Ayu, it increases the Ayusha of an Indusha. Lakshmi Pradha, Prabha, Dhis, Bruti, Kara, so it is used for increasing the memory. Lakshmi Prada. Lakshmi is a sign of health. So it increases the health. And also, this Mrutikara, it increases the memory. And uh, it is also used. Akhila Vyadi Vidvamsa. So Akhila Vyadi Vidvamsa, where it can be used in many of the disorders. All sorts of disorders. Akhila Vyadi. What all the diseases you know? This is helpful in treating all those disorders. Akhila Vyadi Vidvamsa. So it, it is going to uh, solve or resolve all the disorders. And also it is Punyam. By administering Swarnabhasma, even you get Punya. So you, uh, practicing Rasa Shastra itself is sort of a Punyam, where Acharya speaks of Shashvatam Punyam. And again, you use Swarnabhasma there, again it's going to enhance your Punya. And also it is punya for the patient by consuming it and also for the doctor for the prescriptions. Bhuta Vesha Prashanti Smara Bhara Sukhadam. So again the psychosomatic disorders. Saukya Pushti Prakashi. So it is going to give him with Saukya Sukha Pushti Prakasha. So it is going to enhance all these qualities. Gangayam Cha Atha Rupyam Gadaharam Ajaka Ajara Kari Meha Pahari Shinanam Pushtikari Sputa Matikaram Virya Bruddhi Prakari. So Snigdham Medhyam Vishagadaharam Brumhanam Vrushya Magram Yakshmon Mod Yakshmo Unmada Prashamana Param Deharoga Pramati. So these are few of the qualities which has been explained. Medha Buddhi Spruti. Sukakaram, Sarva Dosha Amayagnam, Ruchyam, Deepti Prashamitam, Arujam, Swadupakam, Suvarnam, Apakwam, Hema Sangrushtam, Shilaya, Jalayo, Kataha, Dravarupam, Tutatpeyam, Madhuna, Gudada, Yayakam. So he speaks about even Apakwa, it can be taken in the form of Swarnavarak, where it has been used in many of the preparations. Again, you have many of the references of the similar kind. You can go through them in the textbooks. So it is uh, where you have Malla is used for the Marana in some of the preparations. Then it turns to be Ugra. It is useful uh, in case if you can do the Marana of the Swarnabhasma with Malla, 
as an ingredient then it is used in the preparations of the yogendra rasa brahatvata chintamani rasa raja rasa and hemagarbha potali in rajakshma second and third stage mix this swarna basma along with mrugaanka rasa raja mrugaanka maha mrugaanka rasa ratna garbha potali and hemagarbha potali and give it to the patient it's very much beneficial it should be avoided in shushka kasa pitta jagrahani paitika jwara pitta prakopa rajakshma first stage anupanam nearly 15 plus anupanas are been explained in the textbook but according to the disease the anupanas can be selected therapeutically the next one is about the rajata basma again rupyam vipaka madhuram tuvara amla saram sheetam saram parama lekhanam cha rupyam so it is used as madhura vipaka it is sheeta saraguna this is very important it doesn't allow anything to get accumulated in the body it just flows it this is saraguna which makes unceasing flow so this is very much important in sangha pathology where you have the channels being blocked you need that saraguna to be incorporated so on that grounds we need to give them with that of the rajata basma and the most fancy part of the rasa oshadhis or the rasa practice is you will come across here parama lekhanam cha rupyam snigdham cha vata kafaji ka vata kafajit jhataragni deepi see how uh, vichitra pratyarabdha is this parama lekhanam it is a lekhana guna and also it is a snigdham cha you have both of the opposite qualities like normally what happens if it is lekhanam this is lekhanam and it is snigdham you have ruksha and lekhana property okay many times it is common but you have atyanta snigdha dravya which performs the lekhana guna so this is vichitra pratyarabdha and this is a fancy of the rasa practice you find this atypical combinations in a single drug specifically in rasa oshadhis that is the reason why rasa practice said to be the most divine practice because it gives some therapeutic evaluations possibly which even the vaidya would not have thought about it about these therapeutic benefits so that is the benefit of going with that of the rasa practice it is nigda and it is lekhana normally what happens you have ruksha and lekhana guna together but it is nigda and lekhana guna which is almost contradicting but they are incorporated in a single drug so this is a fancy of rasa oshadhis vata kapha ji so it is very much specific in the disorders of vata and kapha and also jata ragni deepi it is going to increase the jata ragni it is balyam param sthira vayaskarancha so it is also useful as vayaskara it is going to stop the aging process or the geriatric complaints and also it is medhyam it is ropyam sheetam kashayamlam snigdham vata haram gurum rasayana vidhanena sarva rogapaharakam so it is used in all the disorders it can rajata basma can be given in all the disorders based on suitable anupanam you can give it in various clinical conditions rupyam sheetam kashayamlam swadupaka rasam saram vayasthapanam snigdham lekhanam vata pitta jit prameehaadi roghaascha naashet chirta dhruvam gutikaasya drutha vaktre trishna shosha vinashini so when you ask a patient to lick it through his mouth with small amount of gruta in his mouth then it is very much curing the trishna and shosha so you take a small amount of basma mixed with gruta and it's been applied or you ask a patient to lick it then it helps in treating many of these conditions like trishna and shosha so again you have sumrutam chandraloham vayasthapanam balyam cha daaharam स्मृति खाति विवर्धन तृष्णा शोष प्रशमन परमंच रसायन ब्रह्महारी विशेषेण गर्भाशय विशोधन सी द रेफर हाउ ब्यूटिफुल इट इस गर्भाशय विशोधन वेन ऐ वॉन्ट टू क्लेंज द यूटर ऐ गिव रजत बस्म टू द फीमेल दिस इज रेफर फ्रॉम दस तरंगिनी सो इन द प्री कंसेप्शन पीरियड रजत बस्म इज अ चॉइस ऑफ ड्रग फॉर मी टू बी गिवन टू द फीमेल्स बिकॉज ऐ वॉन्ट द गर्भाशय शोधन so i give rajata basma for at least 3 months to the patient my choice is rajata garbha potali which is again a enhanced property of the rajata basma and i give it to the patient which acts as garbhashaya shodhana which is very much useful in treating or which is uh, helpful for making the kshetrikarana before you go for the implantation 
or, or the zygote formation or the insemination process, it's better like you go for the Garbhashaya Shodhana, which is very much essential. So these are the other references of the similar kind. It can be used in Netra Roga, Shaya, Buddha Roga, Pitta Pradhana Jakasa, Prameha, Pandu, Kliha, Yakrut Roga, Dhatukshinata. It is used in Apasmara, strengthening the Vata Vahinis, Vata Shamana. It does the Brahmana of the Mamsa Peshis and the Rakta Vahinis. It is Ayu Virya, Buddhi and Kanti Vardaka, especially used in Ashita Vata Vyadis. It is Vata Dosha plus Ama Dosha, then add Yoga Raja Gugulu. Dhatukshaya and Abhighata to the Shotas, especially of the Vata, then this has been used. Garba Ashaya Shotaka action has been observed here. Next is the Tamra Basma. So it is used in Tada Drogahara Anupanena Sahitam Tamram. So Dvivalon Mitam, Samledam, Pranama Shulam Mudharam, Shulam, Pandudjwaram. So it is used in uh, all the disorders. Again, Tamra is used in all the disorders. Tata Drogahara Anupana. So with the suitable Anupanam, it can be given in all these conditions. It is also used in the conditions like the Gulma, Liha, Ekrut, Shaya, Agni Sada, that is uh, Amandagni. It is used in Meha, that is Prameha, Moolamayam, like Arshas and other disorders, Drushtvacha Grahanim Haret, Dhruvamidam Shri Somanatha Vidam. So this is the significance of the Somanadiya Tamra Basma. So similarly, you have many of the references in, um, uh, I have given almost uh, three hours of lectures on only the Tamra Basma and its therapeutic evaluation from Ayurveda Network, which is on the YouTube. You can watch it, it's almost for three hours where I have spoken on the Tamra Basma. So there you have much of the therapeutic evaluations. So it is Prameha, Ajirana, Sanipata Roga, Kafodara, Plihodara, Parinama Shula, Daha, Hikka, Vibhanda, Udara Shula, Sangrahani, Pandu, Pinasa, Mamsar Buddha. It is used in metabolic deformities, gastrointestinal tract disorders, cardiac illness, infective conditions of the kidney and other places, and post -granthis. So this is about the assimilation process of the copper and its metabolism in the body. You can try to read out all these things from any of the biopharmaceutics textbooks. Similarly, this is about the Loha Basma. So it is very specific to be used in Napunsaka. And also it is Shigra Skhalana, Shigra Patana, Swapna Dosha, Mutra Dosha, Pandu, Sharira Nirbhalata, Amashaya Vruddhi, so you have a patient with high tasarnia, loha basma is a drug of choice. It is amashaya vruddhi. You have uh, any of such conditions, then loha basma is to be given to the patients. Ayuvardhanam, bala, periyavardhanam, roganasha, and kamotejaka, uttama rasayana, sreshtatam, naranam. So it is a very specific drug which can be given to the individuals. It is saraka, it is having saraguna, Rakta, Mamsa, Paustika, Chakchushya, Ikrutupliha Roga, Sangrahani, Mandagni, Amatisara, Udarashula, Prameha, Kshaya, Visha, Rudroga, Shwasa, Kasa, Arshas, Netra Roga, Vata, Mamsa and Snayu Rogas. So this is about the assimilation process of iron in the body. The hypothesis is Abrakabasma. Of course, this you can refer it from the Maharasa course in IIR. Uh, we have discussed about the Abrakabasma almost for seven to eight hours there. So this is from the textbooks again. It is used in Tridhosha Javrana, Prameha, Pushta, Pliha, Udhara, Ayuvardaka, Dhatuvardaka, Vrana, Balakara, Virya Vardaka, Dirgayu. One who takes this, his son will be Dirgayu and Indra Samana. Good progeny. So you need to give Abrakabasma in the preconception period. It is used in Atisara, Kshaya, Pandu, Grahani, Ama, Shwasa, Kasa, Gulma, Kamala, Mandagani, Udara, Jwara, Arshas, Urakshata, Pandu, Vatavyadi, Manasika, Durbhalata, Apasmara, Dhatukshinata, Rudroga. It increases the Ruchi, that is Ruchi Vardaka, Vrushya and Medoprada, Daridrata Nashaka. So this is having a huge attributes. And much of these things have been already discussed there in the Maharasa Varga for the people who are more interested can definitely register for the Maharasa group of course. So thank you. Thank you very much. This is what I would like to come up with the discussing uh, the 
materials on about the uh, the basmas and how they can have their ther therapeutic evaluation how they can have their significance on the pharmaceutical preparations as well much of them i have tried to cover with the classical and my practical approaches need not like something like they are from uh, uh, almost always from a reference many of my experiences also have been incorporated here so according to this people who find it is more logical with your yukti and the knowledge of the textbooks can definitely follow it for their betterment in their clinical and pharmaceutical knowledge so thank you thank you very much anything uh, would like to discuss that could be really great thank you very much namaste sir yes. thank you very much for your valuable session sir uh, sir with your permission uh, can we take the questions there are lots of questions on yes. the Yes. 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 Definitely. Okay. Sir, does Chandrika. No. Exception is only for Tamra Basma. The next question: Some books mention that Parad Marit Basma does not pass his Varitar Pariksha because it was Guru in Guna. Is it true? No. Which book is referred that? So this question is from. Uh, Dr. Desh. Hmm. So that actually depends totally. Can we take on... another question? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Parad and Chandrika relation, sir. What is the relation between Parad and Chandrika? No, no, no. What there, is the relation no. between Parada and Chandrika? No, no. There is no relationship between the Parada and Chandrika Yukta. Chandrika Yukta is because of the metallic component of the respective basma which you are preparing. It is still pertaining in the form of a dhatu. Like you are using Tavra basma, you are using Loha basma, you are preparing Loha basma and that particular Loha basma is uh, still having a metallic component in it, then it is having the glittering nature. But the exception as per Ayurveda Prakash is only for Tamra Basma, where he speaks about Parada Marita Tamra Basma is Sir Chandrika Yukta, means it is having glittering. This is an exception only for Tamra Basma. There is, it doesn't mean like it's having a relationship between. Okay, sir. So some people are used to drink water in copper glass. So to check purity of copper glass, Dadi Pariksha can be done. Yeah, and you did not, in case if it's a copper glass and all, you need not do the Dipariksha. You can just leave it as it is, it gets tarnished. It, if it gets tarnished, it should be copper because copper is having the tarnishing nature. It turns black. Again, you need to rub it with some Amla Dravyas to remove it. Of course, the Dipariksha is not contraindicated. Definitely can do it. Yes, sir. Hmm. Sir, how super can be used for Purvan Sorry? How swan basma can be used for punswan? How swan basma yeah. can See, be used you for don't have, You don't have like it has to be used as oral or external, but of course, swarna basma is among the, some of the people where they are practicing it to be given oral administration of it, even in the preconception period. Pumsavana doesn't mean like it is for the desiration of the male. Uh, child. Pumsavana is desiring a healthy child, whether it's a male or female, it's a healthy child. So for that, we are using Swarna Basma for the nourishment of the dhatus. Okay. Uh, sir, next question is again related to copper. Sir, is it advisable to drink water in copper glass? Yes. Will it be cause toxicity after long time in the body because people are drinking cold day? So this is the common question which general people ask. No, 
No, no, absolutely. You can drink the water from the copper vessels, but try to uh, preserve it for a shorter period. Right? It's not like you you place the water today and drink it by another two or three days. Don't do that. Try to keep the copper vessels which are small. Don't give the huge, huge vessels. Try to have only half a liter bottle or one liter bottle or some 300 ml cups where you pour water, keep it for some time and you drink it. Even while speaking about the Usha Panam in Ashtanga Sangraha in the Dinacharya, he speaks about the Usha Panam where he speaks about the copper vessels uh, where you place water for the whole night and the next day morning you drink the water from the copper vessel. So this has been advised from Ashtanga Sangraha as well. So it is having its therapeutic value. No, your voice was breaking. I guess there is a network glitch. Uh, so I'll take the next question. Yeah. <clears throat> Dr. Jyoti ma'am, uh, your voice is breaking. Yeah, Dr. Pali, you can. I can go with the next question. So, uh, what is the, uh, I'll just take the last question and so that I can follow up with the other questions. Yeah. Um, so Bhasma and Anupana with the herbal drugs, among these both, which one is the main drug and which one is the catalyst? Uh, it's not like uh, some drug is a main drug or some drug is a subordinate. Together they make a beautiful combination. You, you need to give equal importance to the prime drug, you have to give equal importance to the Anupanam, only then you see the therapeutic evaluation. Don't make it as this is first and this is second. Okay, sir. So I'll go with the next question. Can yeah. you please explain the standardized preparation of Rajata Bhasma? The most best part is Rajata Parada Gandaka that can be used. There is another preparation from Rasa Tarangini, I guess, where we are using Rasa Sindura, Aratala, and Navasadara as a Maraka Gana, lemon as a Bhavana. And uh, this is the one which is very commonly used and uh, this is really effective in the people. Okay. Um, next one, I'll just check, sir. Uh, ma'am, is your audio clear? Yes, yes, yes my audio is okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, no. Uh, so the next question is, can SWAN be used to increase the AMH value? Hmm. Uh, in case if it is because of the dhatukshaya, then definitely yes, it can be used. Okay, sir. So, sir, how it can be judged, sir? Because in the later... Uh, no, 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 you need to assess yes. the dhatusarata. There is a dhatusar assessment given in the textbook. If you find that dhatusarata has been hampered, then you need to give Swarnabhasma. Or else you need not. Okay, okay, sir. So, next question... Sir, dosage of for and autoimmune disease. Uh, see, in case if it is uh, only as Rasayana Artha, 2 grams per month for an adult is sufficient. But in case if it is uh, for the disease, like the autoimmune conditions, where you have the condition is deteriorating very fast, then you can have it almost up to 2 grams per week. Okay, sir question is, can we make Ras Sindur by interrupted heating in three days like Mridu Agni for the first day, Madhyam Agni for the second and Trivra Agni for the third day? No, no, you can do it, but don't name it as interrupted heating. Interrupted heating in the sense where I think so like in the evening you switch off the fire and next day again you switch it on. No, that's not possible. Give a continuous Agni. No problem. You can do it. Okay, sir. So next question, 
सर इज निरुथीकरण ऑफ लोह भस्मा इज मैंडेटरी बिफोर अमृतीकरण डज निरुथीकरण चेंजेस द क्वालिटी ऑफ लोह भस्मा एज इट कंटेन्स गंधका विच इज नॉट यूज ड्यूरिंग मारन प्रोसेस प्लीज गिव योर इनपुट्स नो Nirutikarana, we don't do it for the whole basma which you have prepared. We take a very small quantity of it. Might be it's around ten grams. You have prepared some one kg of loha basma. Out of that, we are taking only ten grams and doing the nirutha pariksha. So it's not a mandate for the whole slot. You have to do it. You can do it for a small sample of it and then use it. So okay, there is nothing like a problem there. Okay, sir. So next question: Swan basma, same dose. And single useful in all the conditions. Anupana and Sahepan rule. No, no, it's in totally case. different. Depending on the dosha, dosha, samurchana, always it differs. Okay, sir. Uh, so next question: Can swan be used as blood thinner in combination no. with other drugs? Sir, we no. can use rajat in this case. No, we can use it, but don't name it as blood thinner. because tomorrow people will uh, say something like do, do you want to equate it with something like aspirin or heparin or anything no no we don't want to make it might be yes it is having saraguna that is wonderful okay hmm. we can use rajat also sir in yes yes study. yes rajat is a very good drug which can be used there yes sir so next question uh, after preparing low bhasma is it stick with chumbak mm. then it is okay or mistake during the preparation because most most of the pharma companies low bhasma is stick with chumbak so yes. it is same like amway company do the experiment so it reminded me of that yeah, yeah. no uh, many times people uh, do this uh, but what the thing is we have done the magnetic test for the loha bhasma the one which is uh, still having the magnetic property means when it attracts to a magnet even then it is therapeutically active and it's not having any side effects to the patient even though in case if it's not getting adhered to the magnet and even then it is um, therapeutically active but as per the norms the loha basma should not have the magnetic property it should not have it because it ha it has to totally lose the metallic nature so it should not have the magnetic property yes sir sir do lohitikarana of abrak is only for purpose of getting the right color or does it also have any additional therapeutic effect uh it doesn't have uh, exactly like some other therapeutic efficacy and all but many times this lohitikarana Uh, you have given many of the putas to abraka 100 1000 and all so to compensate that atyanta rukshata lohiti karana supports it because it makes it easily assimilable into the human body that is the reason why lohiti karana is done it's not alone of course it's it's also useful for attributing the color but more than that it becomes more assimilable in the human body that's the reason why we need the lohiti karana yes sir sir more questions are popping up on uh, abraka so i think delegates should register for abraka because uh, the class was for 8 hours only for yeah. the abraka yeah. so re we request delegates to register for uh, maharasa course it is yeah. there in our website you can yes. register there yes and uh, next question sir uh, we are having whether maran method decides indications of swarna basma yes definitely not swarna basma for all the basmas all, yeah. indication is because of the marana method yes sir mm. so can we use this instead of anticoagulant modern medicine again the same no medicine. no no don't substitute it better you understand it on the grounds of the saraguna where is thapna indicated in both swarna and rajata how to decide which one to and to whom we should give vaisthapana see in case it depends on the characteristics of an individual their dosha dushyas you want more of the rasayana property and you want a bit of ugrata uh, swarna is indicated uh, rajata is more saumya uh, swarna is also saumya but compared to rajata swarna is less saumya 
Rajata is very much Soumya, but it is uh, having, uh, Swarna is having more of Rasayana property. Rajata is also having Rasayana, but it is less Rasayana compared to that of Swarna. Because that is Tridoshaja, this is only Vata and Kafaja. So you have, depending on the patient's Prakruti or the Vikruti as such, again you can select it and try to give the drug to the patient. Sir, commonly in practice we see that when a male reaches to 60 or 65, he just start dumping himself with the Makardwaja, Swani, yes. the, like this medicines ah. without any prescriptions. Yes. So what should you uh, advise for these kind no, of people? In, in, in case if he wants to take it on a therapeutic dosage and all, then we are not worried. That's good if he can take. But again, it should be as per the advice of any of the registered practitioner. Then it is fine. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, dosage of Rajat Bhasma in Garbashaya Shodhana? Usually it's given around 6 grams per month. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, can we use Rajat Bhasma in any age group? Like in children? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right from the childbirth to the geriatric practice. You can. Yes, sir. Maximum dosage of Swarn Bhasma per day, whether it can be used in pregnancy, please explain, sir. Yeah, I give Swarna Bhasma throughout pregnancy for all the patients, whoever uh, they come for this Garbini Charya, for all of them, I am giving Hemagarbha Kotli to the patient for the whole of nine months uh, because I want Ojo Vardhana to be seen for the whole of nine months. Mother is giving much of her energy and her sarata to the child. I'm not supposed to uh, use a word like this. I know I'm irrational in using, but still the child acts or the fetus acts as a parasite. It mm -hmm. first takes away the nourishment. The left out nourishment is for the mother. Mm -hmm. The prime choice is the child always. The body, the child takes away all the nutrient of the mother. Then we are not supposed to neglect the mother as well. So we need both of them to be fine. The ojas of both the mother as well as the child is important. So Swarna Basma is one of the best ojo vardaka. That's the reason why I give uh, Swarna Basma for all the females during pregnancy. And moreover, sir, uh, wearing of uh, gold jewelry is also it's, considered it's very, auspicious in this time. No, no it's yes. more therapeutically active as such. Yes. It should be worn. Sir, I am advising my cancer patients to wear as much as jewelry, gold jewelry, in, and they are taking also intake is also advised in, for gold jewelry also be advised. They yes. feel good, good after yes. doing yes. that. Definitely. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, next question. Sir, can you please elaborate about Vang Bhasma Guna? No, that takes again a long, lengthier time. We'll definitely go through that again, might be in some future classes. Sir, can Rajat Bhasma be used in coronary artery blocks due to yes. its Lekhana Guna? Definitely, it can be used. Okay, sir. So, next question What is the vehicle for Rajat Bhaskaro Naya? Naya is it can be directly or mixed with some churnas like Ashwagandha? Yeah, it can be definitely used for any of the drugs. Uh, Rajata Basma can be used in any of the vehicles depending on the patient's condition. Okay. Uh, so next question. If anything remains in the bottom of the bottle of the kupi while making Ras Sindhur, what was that? Uh, many times it is a metallic component if you are prepared anyway or sometimes it's an improper temperature which you have given. You need to give more amount of temperature so that everything gets sublimed in case if it is uh, rasa Sindhura. But in case if it is Makradvaja or if you are preparing some Tamra Sindhura or anything like that, metallic component settles at the bottom. So that's not an abnormality. Next question is, sir. Swan Prashna of the present day, what dose of it to the children and how do you decide the dose of Swan Prashna? No, I don't really uh, encourage giving some drops and all to the children. Instead, I ask them to take away uh, the Swarna Basma and ask them to mix a very small quantity of it. And in another spoon, you take Madhu, Gruta, Brahmi, Gruta, whatever you want and mix it by themselves, by the mother and give it to the child. 
because uh, the basma is not a soluble substance it's a suspension it settles in the bottom because of its uh, weight uh, and this uh, doesn't make a uniform mixture so the packing which comes to you if it is from the superficial then you get only madhu and grita the one which comes at the bottom it's usually having swarna basma in it might be it's a very small nanoparticle you are unable to see it through it when you see it across the sunlight but still um, the basma settles in the bottom or it becomes something like a suspension it's never a solution so it's always better for the uniform or homogeneous mixture you try to mix the basma for every sitting and give it to the patient yes sir and it is in form of uh, avale form it is not yes. in drop, droplets yes yes and we have a detailed session on the free sessions sir yes yes it is available on our website there is a yeah. free video of near about 1 and 1/2 hour yeah. everybody is requested to see it from there and uh, sir the next question shodhana prajat bhas shodhana prajat confused with the order and how many times no you have the samanya dhatu shodhana taile takre kava mutre haranale kulathaje kramat nishecha taptam dave dravetu saptada so the same method has been adopted the samanya shodhana has been adopted and based on the uh, therapeutic evaluation wherever you would like to use it you can go for the selection of the vishesha shodhana of it okay sir hmm. so next question can rajat basan be used in hair loss yeah in case if it is avarodhajanya okay can be yeah uh, one second sir can we prepare ras garba potli only by taking kajli as an, an as an ingredient with seven times swaras bhavana kumari yes. swaras bhavana yes 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 you can we definitely can modify it yeah yeah you can do it but what the thing is always in the ras garba potli you have uh, swarna basma as a small portion as an ingredient as per the protocol you are supposed to add it for more rasayana okay sir so swarna basam dose in children regular as rasayan instead of prashan uh usually what we do is in case if it's an infant where uh, the body weight of the child is almost less than 8 kg that is prior to the first birthday we try to give 1 gram in one year that is the dosage what is given and in yes. case in case if it is 8 kg body weight to 15 or 12 kg body weight that is in the second year we give around 2 grams in the whole year 12 yes, to 15 kg plus to 20 to 25 kg body weight then we are giving around 4 grams per year and 25 to 30 kg plus we are giving approximately around 1 gram per month if they are affordable if they want just for rasayana artha and they don't want to take it uh, with a huge quantities uh, then might be for every 3 months you can uh, go with 1 or 2 grams depending on the body weight of the child okay sir so please suggest standard reference books to prepare bhasmas no always i advise rasaratna samuchi okay sir that's a very wonderful book yes sir hmm. so these are the questions for today yeah and uh, we again thank you from our heart sir again one question popped up uh, sir can we boil glass of water with gold yeah that is also very much uh, useful you have some micrograms of uh, uh, gold coming out there so that's therapeutically very very active and it can be used as a very good rasayana i do indeed advise it for many of my patients yes sir so thank you very much for your giving your precious time yeah and it is very uh, overwhelming session sir thank you very much sir yeah. thank you so thank you thank you very much do visit indian institute of ayurveda and rashastra we are coming up with a preconception course and later on we are coming up we are planning up to come up with more and more amount of courses so try to visit our website and be linked with us thank you thank you very much thank you dr parvin dr jyoti thank you sir yeah.